no matter what you need to know, God has imparted that wisdom and that knowledge into your life. Now it's just a matter of hearing it. We are led by the Spirit. We are able to be guided by that wisdom and by the voice of God to lead us into the perfect purposes and plans of God. Hello, my friend, and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Alan Bagg. This week, we're having a look at what it means to be led by the Spirit of God, how we can hear God's voice. But not only that, I want to get to some keys about how to hear God's voice. One of the greatest requests that we have, one of the greatest desires of believers that I know around me is that I want to hear God. I want to hear God's voice. Why is that? Well, we know the Bible tells us, we see so many examples in the Old Testament, how God spoke to people that they even heard Him audibly. And then we see in the New Testament, people are definitely led by the Spirit of God, and we live under a new and a better covenant. So if people in the old covenant could hear God's voice, surely we should be able to hear God even more clearly today under the new covenant. Well, the pro great, great, great promise is that we are able to. Isn't it wonderful to know that in Galatians chapter 4, verse 6, the Bible says, Because you are sons, we are born again children of God. God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Now, why would He cry out, Abba, Father, if we wouldn't be able to hear it? I says, well, I don't know if I've heard that. See, sometimes when we talk about hearing, we think of our physical ears. There's more hearing to what you're going to hear in audible sound. We need to be able to hear audible sound, of course, the same way I'm communicating with you now. That sound is transferred to your ear and you're able to hear it. But we know that there are some people that live without being able to hear audibly. And so they may use sign language. But you notice how all of that is in the natural even if they use Braille, that's in the natural. Any form of communication in the natural realm could be deceptive. We know that sometimes we feel certain things, and yet our feelings are not accurate to what's actually happening. That can happen with sound. It can happen with communication. How often does it happen when someone says something, and then we're upset by it, and then when we explain to them what they said, they said, no, that's not what I said, or that's not what I meant, and I said it this way, and or I used those words, and you think, well, it didn't come across like that because we use body language and all kinds of things. So in other words, the message can be corrupted by our feelings and emotions. But when it comes to the Spirit of God speaking to us, He speaks in a clear, direct way that you will have no worry or concern that you've missed what God is saying. And he says here in Galatians chapter 4 verse 6 that the Spirit of God speaks to us as we are sons of God. He speaks within our hearts crying out, Abba, Father. There's an assurance in your heart. It's not something that happens in your ear. It is an assurance in your heart. He is my Father. Now, what is that? Well, Jesus told us when we saw yesterday, we ended off here, John chapter 10, look at verse 27. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. So if Jesus says we hear his voice, then we do hear it. And I use the example of a television screen, uh, you know, right there while you're watching this broadcast today. There are other signals in the room, because if you change channel now, you'd see them. But you tune into this one. And the same way in a radio, if it has a static on either side, if, you, if your dial is slightly off or you're on a different station, a different number, then you might, even if you're close to the station, you can hear the voice, but it's not clear. That, well, the key is to bring that radio station onto the correct signal, when you tune into the right frequency, then what happens is you tune out all the static and you can hear the voice of the person speaking very clearly. Now, the enemy is creating all kinds of static in our lives. 
He's speaking to us and throwing fear at us, using circumstances around us. Media is bombarding us nonstop, whether it's through television, through radio, through internet, through all kinds of things, people talking to us. How do I get to the place where I can tune all that out and hear God's voice? Because if I'm able to do that, then God can lead me to where He needs me to be. God has great plans for your life, and He wants you to know what they are. Well, let's have a look from the New Testament and the great examples in Matthew chapter 16. We see Jesus talking to His disciples one day, and He has this conversation with them, and He says in verse 13, When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, He asked His disciples, saying, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Now that to me is always an important question. I, whenever I read the scripture, I pause there and I ask myself, who do I say that Jesus is. See, Jesus isn't really concerned about what others think about him when he's talking to you. I don't tell Jesus, my pastor says, or my friend says, or my dad says. No, who am I to you? And I want to know who my Jesus is to me. And so I always take a little time just to meditate on that. Say, Father, you know what? Jesus is my Savior. He loves me. He saved me. He gave His life for me. He's my mediator. He is my deliverer. He's my healer. He's my provider. He's my protector. He is my God. And I serve God in the name of Jesus. And so, who is Jesus to you? Is He just a religion? Is He just a, something we call out when we need help? Or is He our daily bread where we live with Him and walk with Him every day of our lives. I believe He is that to you as well. Amen. He's your living God and He is your Savior. And notice, who do you say that I am? Verse 16, Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Now I want you to take your pen and notice, just underline this, look at the word blessed, underline the word blessed, and underline the word revealed, and underline the word my Father who is in heaven. Now there's some keys here I want you to notice. Jesus answered and said to him. What does the word answer mean? Answer means a question was asked. Yet, if I look at verse 16, there's no indication that a question was asked. So if a question was asked, then it's implied in that statement. Well, sometimes when we read this, we look at it back on the situation, and today we know that Jesus is the Son of God. But up to this point here, Jesus hasn't told anybody that He's the Son of God. Notice He says here, uh, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. So Jesus, in His flesh and blood and body, didn't even call Himself the Son of God at this point. He had only referred to Himself as the Son of Man. Look at His question in verse 13. Who do you men say that I, the Son of Man, am? He was talking about Himself being from Adam. He's the last Adam. And so if He's come from, as the Son of Man, being the last Adam, who do men say that I, as the Son of Man, am? He hasn't revealed that He's the Son of God. It was known under Jewish tradition. That's why when Jesus revealed and He said, I and my Father are one, they wanted to stone Him. Well, why were they trying to stone Him? They said, because you, man, make yourself equal with God. In other words, Jesus was referring to Himself as the Son of God, and they wanted to stone Him. That was blasphemy for a man to call himself the Son of God. That's the perspective that Peter's sitting with. 
Okay, he doesn't know Jesus is the Son of God. He hasn't been told that by Jesus or by anybody else. And he doesn't have the, the, the knowledge that we have today. So under Jewish tradition, to call a man a son of God would be blasphemous. And yeah, when Jesus says, who do you say that I am? It's like he blurts out, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And I hear a question mark behind that. Did I just say that? Am I correct in saying that? Am I, I mean, that's a way out statement to be able to say at this moment. And Jesus immediately gives him assurances. Blessed are you. Simon bar Jonah, you are blessed. And he says, yeah, because flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. So my father has told you, Peter, that I am the Son of God, His Son, and it was revealed. It was revealed. Notice, He didn't say you heard that from heaven. It was revealed to you. Well, how was it revealed? Well, He heard within Himself this voice of God saying that Christ is the Son of the living God. God had spoken to Him right here about Him hearing the voice of God that Jesus is the Son of God. And then Jesus says in verse 18, I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Now we know from the original Greek, you go study that out, that he wasn't calling Peter the rock, because Peter is Petros, and the rock is Petra. So rock is the rock, and Petras is the stone. In other words, he's a piece of the rock. And he's telling him, he's literally renaming him because up to that point, his name is Simon. Simon means a reed, something that's blown about in the wind. And we know that Peter was kind of that way. He was whatever was going, you flip on one side, flip on the other side. But now Jesus says, the fact that you can be guided by my father, there is a rock. The fact that you can hear from heaven, there is a rock. The fact that you know that I am the Son of God, that is the foundation. And I will build my church. And on that foundation, no devil, no hell can do anything to stop my church from growing. And revealed in that is the ability for us as believers to hear from heaven. Isn't that awesome? Now you as a child of God can hear God as well. So let's have a look at that. I want you to notice something, yeah? Jesus says in verse 17, blessed are you. What does the word blessed mean? Blessed is that empowerment. Remember when God created man in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, 27, He created man in His image. Verse 28, God blessed them and said. Now whenever God speaks, He's not just transferring information. He's transferring power. He's creating. When God said, let there be light, light was. So light came as a result of God saying, light be. So when God speaks a word, it empowers that to be. So when he says blessed, when he blesses Adam, he blessed him, said, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, take dominion. What's he doing? He's giving Adam permission for it, but not only permission, the ability to do it. So that blessing is the impartation. It's the impartation of the anointing of God. It's the power of God released. And now that person is empowered to be able to succeed in what God's called them to do. And he's telling Peter here, the fact that you heard from heaven, you're blessed. You are empowered. And so in that situation, that revelation knowledge, you now have got something way beyond anything that flesh and blood could ever offer you. See, as long as we are relying on information in the natural realm, that information can change. That information can be influenced by circumstances. But when we hear the voice of God within our hearts, there's a revelation that takes place. There is knowledge that God wants you to have way beyond your natural ability. See, James chapter 1, verse 5 tells us, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, 
and it will be given to him. See, wisdom is the ability to take knowledge and information and transfer that into action. How do I put knowledge into action? There is so much information out there. Anybody can look up almost anything on the internet today and you can know stuff, but how do I put it into action? You can be trained in your job. You can be trained with all the knowledge that you need to be successful and still not know how to transfer that into action. Yet God is showing us how to do that. So not only does he tell us what's going to happen, but how to get there. And James says here that if we lack wisdom, we can ask God for it. And notice this, he gives to all, all. It's anybody who asks. He gives it liberally, generously, and without reproach. What's without reproach mean? It means without teasing, without mocking you. He doesn't, you see, that's something that's amazing with God. There's no such thing as a stupid question. I know sometimes people say, I don't know, Pastor Alan, I know this is a stupid question, but I always like to stop people at that point and say, no, it's not a stupid question. If you don't know, it would be stupid not to ask. I don't care how much everybody else knows. God says my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So if you don't know something, ask about it. And it is important how we ask, the attitude behind it. You know, I just want to ask questions just to try and be, uh, you know, controversial. No, I want to learn because when I have the information, I'm able to make wise decisions. So when we go to God and we realize I don't know how to solve this problem, you have every right to go to God and say, Father, how do I do this? How do I solve this? And he won't mock you. In fact, notice it says, it will be given to him. So God promises to answer you and give you the wisdom you need to know. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, Paul says in verse 30, that of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Are you born again? Yes. Then you've been redeemed. Are you born again? Yes. You've been sanctified. Are you born again? Yes. Then you've been made the righteousness of God. Now, all of that we're willing to receive. Yes, Lord. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be saved. So I am saved. I'm redeemed. I'm sanctified by you. I've received the righteousness of God. Well, in that same wonderful gift package was included the wisdom from God. From God. Not just the wisdom of God, the wisdom that comes from God. So it's not just the wisdom of God. If it's from God, He's given it to you. You have the wisdom of God within you. Have a look here in Colossians chapter 1. It's amazing when you see what's available to us by reading the Word of God. Because in His Word, He reveals to us everything that we need to know. Look at verse 9. He says, For this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you be filled with the knowledge of His will. Now, this is a prayer I pray over you every day. Partners of this ministry, this is spoken every day into your life. So you can say, this was prayed over me today. I receive it in the name of Jesus. Listen to what he says. I do not cease to pray for you and ask that you be filled with the knowledge of His will. Listen now. In all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing Him, fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. So everything that God knows and has understanding of, which is everything, because he, he is literally the creator of everything that we know. So He is the origin of knowledge and wisdom. And we have Him within our hearts. We can receive that within us, that we are filled with the knowledge of His will. You can know exactly what God's will is for your life. And we pray that you are filled with it. Now notice, in all wisdom. So no matter what you need to know, God has imparted that wisdom and that knowledge into your life. Now it's just a matter of hearing it. And we've come to a place now where we know by faith that number one, the Holy Spirit dwells within our hearts. Number two, He is speaking to us all the time. He's revealing to us what we need to know. Jesus said that when He goes to the Father, He will send us the Holy Spirit 
and that Holy Spirit will reveal to us, He'll tell us what He knows, and He's revealing to us the things of God. Number three, it is the full wisdom of God released into your heart. Number four, through this prayer, it has been spoken into your life that you are able to receive it. And what is spoken by faith, we receive by faith. And so number five, we are led by the Spirit. We're able to be guided by that wisdom and by the voice of God to lead us into the perfect purposes and plans of God. And so what we're going to do is have a look at the keys now. Tomorrow, don't miss it. We're going to see how we can position ourselves to have that guidance in our lives. I've got something I want to pray over you after this. I'll see you now. Welcome to Come Celebrate. Yes, hey, Alan and Janine Bag invite you to join us for Come Celebrate 2023, taking place at the Bay Christian Family Church from the 28th till the 30th of March. God's ready to do a great work. Great work. Great work. And this week is about getting your, getting eye, your eye on the ball. On the ball. Right. What has God said? Get ready for get it. Ready for get it. your hands ready. Get your feet ready. Get your whole posture ready. Be prepared and ready. This year, we will be getting together with anointed guest speakers and artists to step into God's promises of enhancement and expansion in this year ahead. And those that are ready to receive, receive will catch it. So That's you right. just need to be prepared to receive whatever He has for you this week. Amen. He is Amen. going to get it to you. This is a free conference, but register to be part of Come Celebrate 2023 taking place at the Bay Christian Family Church from the 28th till the 30th of March. Did you know that God speaks to us every day? Would you like to hear His voice and have every question answered that needs answering? God is speaking to us all the time. No matter what decisions you need to make, God wants to help you make wise decisions that will help you succeed in life. Which tells me I need to be able to hear Him. In this new series by Dr. Alan Bagg, you will learn that you have an awesome ability not to only recognize God's voice, but also hear the voice of God so that He can guide you into the abundant life Jesus paid for us to have. God wants to tell me because His desire is for you to prosper. His desire is for you to succeed. Contact us at these details. Order your series today and learn to recognize and follow the voice of God's guidance toward a successful future. Hearing the voice of God's guidance for a successful future. God has great plans for us. His desire is for us to walk in His will. And when you walk in His will, you will see His perfect plan come to pass in your life and the lives of those around you. As you walk successfully in the guidance of God, God is able to manifest everything that He has prepared for you. So how do we do that? God is telling us. He's sharing His plans with us. He's leading us. He's guiding us. And so I want to know how to follow Him. And the key to that is successfully hearing God's voice. Now, as we've already learned, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. So how do I make sure that I fine tune into that? This is eight parts of me giving instruction from the Word of God, using personal examples from my life and coaching in how to fine tune yourself, fine tune your spirit so that you can hear God's voice every time He speaks to you. So I encourage you, get a hold of your set today, spend some time in it, take some notes, study it out and Remember, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So get yours today. Now, I know that you faced some challenges and the devil has tried to take you out in so many different ways, but you've stood strong. And I'm going to pray with you right now because I want you to hear God's voice and I believe God gives you wisdom. And James said, if any of us lacks wisdom, we can ask God and He'll give it generously without reproach. That's all we need sometimes. When the problem shows up, if I know what to do, technically, I don't have a problem. It's a challenge, but if I know how to solve it, problem over. So let's believe that together. Father, I thank you so much for my dear friend. And I know that no matter what the enemies try to throw at their lives, you've already given insight and wisdom in how to get through that situation. And so I pray and I ask you for wisdom. 
according to your word, that that wisdom be spoken into the heart of my friend, that they hear your voice, they hear your direction, and that they have supernatural insight into that situation. I release it in the name of Jesus, and I believe as they hear your voice, hear it now. Those plans are given, they understand them, and can follow them, and I speak success and prosperity into that household. I thank you, Father, for delivering them from every situation according to the promise of your word. And we thank you for good success. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Well, praise God. I believe that prayer has been answered. And so I want to know when it does happen, when you see it happening in the natural please write to me at the address that you see on the screen there and let us have your testimony. I love to hear about how God's Word is working in people's lives and we can share it with others as well. Well, that's all we have time for today. I look forward to being with you again tomorrow. This is Alan Bagg reminding you Jesus is Lord. Remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. Visit Alan Bagg Ministries online. At allenbagministries.org, you can find out more about Alan Bag, the call of God on his life, and more about who we are as a ministry. On our website, you will also be able to connect with us by making use of our contact details. You will also find out about the heartbeat of Alan Bag Ministries and how you can know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Hello, my friend. My name is Alan Bag, and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. On our website, you will be able to watch our current television programs as well as catch up on any previously broadcast programs you may have missed. You will also be able to find the platforms we are broadcasting on as well as join us for our live streamed services at the Bay Christian Family Church over the weekends and special occasions. If you would like to get hold of some resources taught by Alan Bagg, browse our online shop for some faith-building material that will help you further your knowledge on the many topics available. On occasion, there are also some great promotions and free study programs available. On our website, you can find out how to get involved as a partner or even find out more information about partnering with Alan Bagg Ministries. You can also make use of our easy-to-use giving facilities on our website and get involved in the many projects and ways available. Through the grace of God, Allen Bag Ministries help many to get through the challenges they face on a daily basis. And our heart is to help you in any way we can. So visit us at allenbagministries.org and let us help you identify and succeed in what the Lord has called you to do.